I'll be showing 15 new features in Teams for Education. This includes updates for core assignments, insights, gradebook, reflect, reading progress, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a long time request, which is average grade in the gradebook. So I'm here as an educator and I'm gonna go click on grades. I'm here in the gradebook and here are all the assignments with the different points right here. And you're gonna see this new class average. So 88.4% across the class. I can see the average grade per assignment right here. And then I can see the average grade per student. So it's really easy to go. And then if I wanna drill in right here, for example, I can click and there's the student. I'll go back and I'll set a filter here really quick. Here's a two week filter in April. So now I can filter in on those grades and check the averages just for those times. The second new feature is supporting adding GIFs or images to assignment instructions. I'm here in assignments and I will click create and assignment. I'll give it a title and instructions. And there's this new button here to add an image or a GIF. So I'll click add image and I'm gonna upload one right here. Select an image, hit open. Now it made it really big. What's nice is I can click the image and I can size it. So I'm gonna size this down a bit smaller. Now I can also add a GIF. So I'm gonna go here and we're gonna attach an animated GIF. Here's a nice GIF. This one's of my good friend, the immersive reader, just to show what it looks like. But you can add an animated GIF into your instructions as well. And so now I'm gonna go hit assign and my students will get an image as well as a GIF right there in the assignment instructions. The third new feature is improvements to our video recording capabilities for assignments, whether you're a teacher or a student. I'm gonna go hit new and I will choose video recording. What you see here is the flip camera. We've swapped out the older stream camera and now we have a bunch of the flip features. It's not the full camera, but there are a bunch of great features here. Options will go and show you mic only mode. So maybe I just wanna do audio. Now I'm doing mic only mode. We'll turn that off. I can mirror my video, so swap myself the other way. Mute, and then device settings. Now some of the fun parts though are the effects. So I'll choose effects, and I can do stickers. Okay, I'm gonna choose one right here. Hey, there's a little celebration. I can move that around. Now I'll start recording. Get a countdown. Now as I'm recording, I'm gonna hit effects, and I'm gonna add a nice little pen. I'm gonna circle myself like this. So you get a nice little set of updates with the video camera. This is a better camera than we've had in the past. When you're all done, I'll hit next. Now as I'm recording, I so I get some of these right nice there. features here. If I want to trim this and you can see where I added my ink. So I'll go back and forth like that. And if I want to delete the clip, I can choose this. And when I confirm, now I'm ready to give it a name. We'll give it instructions and hit upload. Click done. And now I've got the instructions attached to my assignment as a teacher. We're gonna be adding even more flip camera features in the near future, so stay tuned. The video camera is gonna get even more fun than it is right now. The fourth new feature is significant improvements to the assignment and grade portion of the insights. I'm here in my class team as a teacher and I'll go to insights. Now I'll click on assignments for grades and submissions. You'll see a fully redesigned page here. Let's drill into progress status on this column here. You can see viewed by students. You'll see who turned in or not and the returned. I can drill in specifically on this case, I have a bunch of students who didn't even look at their assignment yet. And if I wanna chat and send a direct message to someone, I can click on the name and start a conversation with that person via Teams chat. If I go to grades here, you'll see that average grade just like we saw earlier in the new grade book improvements. And I can see what was not returned yet. So very easy to highlight and see who hasn't been returned to. We also have turn in statistics. Click here and you can see things like missing submissions, submitted late and return for revision. If I scroll down, I can see distribution trends. So the average grade, I can see the distribution right here. I can click on trend and see those trends. We've also added rubrics, and this is gonna be coming very soon, but if you use rubrics on your assignments, you can now get a nice little distribution. You can see how it's been going across the class, and you can hover and get more details on your rubrics. At the bottom, you'll see the student list. So right here, you can see the students who are missing this assignment. This one has been turned in, it looks like. There's some who are missing these assignments, so a lot of great information. I can also filter on a specific assignment. So if I drop down all assignments here and I go to Julius Caesar, 
you'll see that all the students in this case have turned that one in on time. I can go here and go back to all assignments and now I'm going to filter on a specific student. So I'll click here and choose Deborah Berger. Now I'm filtering just on Deborah, and I can see all of her information. I can see her assignments. I can see her grades. If I scroll down, you can see Deborah is also compared to the entire class. So there's a trend line to compare this student to how the class average is doing. The fifth new feature is that assignments now supports up to 1,000 students in a single assignment. The old limit was 300. We've recently upped this to 1,000 students, which is great for higher education classes or maybe very specific distance learning classes. I'm not going to demo it, but this has fully been rolled out. So 1,000 students are now supported with a single assignment. The sixth new feature is that Reflect is pinned and automatically put on this left-hand reel in a class team. And when you click it as a teacher, you get a specific view. And when you click it as a student, you get a different view. And I'll show both of those. So I'm going to click Reflect right here to drill in. Here's all the different check-ins that I've made with Reflect. Reflect is our social and emotional learning tool that lets teachers post check-ins to the class. So all this great information is now very easily accessible by the teacher. The seventh new feature is also in Reflect, and that is you can view check-in trends directly from here. So I'm going to click this right here. This pulls up a nice set of insights about Reflect check-ins that I can access directly in my class. By scrolling down, I can see the response distribution. These are all the different check-ins. And when I hover, I can see how many students and how they're feeling about different things. As I scroll down, I can look at the most common words, creative, cheerful, annoyed. If I scroll down further, I can see the breakdown by students. So Kiana, I can see her trends or some of these different students. Really helpful information to gauge the temperature of the class, so to speak. You also have the number of check-ins, class participation, and then you can also drop down this and look at the different reflect questions you've asked, or you can filter by date. In addition, we've added class notebook pivots versus teams. Some teachers use class notebook, which also supports reflect check-ins now, or you can pivot back to teams. So a really easy way to drill in and get insights directly from your class. All of these insights are also supported in the broader insights module, but teachers gave us feedback that they wanted to drill in directly from this reflect module. And we'll close this. The eighth new feature are updates to customizations with creating check-ins in reflect. I'll click create check-in as a teacher here, and I've got a few templates. How are you feeling today? How this week feel for you? How do your friendships feel? But we also have the ability to create a custom question. So I'll say, how are you feeling about today's reading assignment. And I can also set the responses so I might make it private so students can't see the responses or the names. By default, they never see the names, but you also might want to let them see other responses in the class. And the teacher can always see everybody's student name and responses. And I'll hit next. You can also set the duration. I might want to have it come out a couple days from now. Maybe I want to create this in the evening, have it post in the morning, even post a week from now. Duration is really handy to set, and you can set what channel it posts to. I only have a general channel, but if you had multiple channels, you could choose that channel. The ninth new feature is going to show how this looks for students. I'm showing the teacher side, but if I was signed in as a student, they will get a different view than the teacher. And what's nice is we have a demo student view. As a teacher, this lets me see exactly how it might look as a student. I will click this. This is the really rich and beautiful student view. You can see the feelings monsters, which is a lot of fun. As a student, I can track all the different responses I've done during the month, maybe look for patterns. I can hover on one of these and see what was the class response. If I click here, I can get a sense of how other students in the class are feeling about their friendships today. We'll close this. I'll hover over Calm. Now the teacher made this check-in private so nobody can see any of the other responses. And as a student, I can't click and see the class responses. Here's what the teacher asked. How are you feeling about today's reading assignment? This was that custom question. Now I'm not feeling perfect about that one. So I'm going to click the flat line neutral, and this is going to let me choose my feelings monster. So maybe it's content. Maybe it's curious. I'm not quite sure. I'm a little bit reserved on this one. So I'll click reserved and I'll click submit and then close. Now you can see the feelings monster about today's reading assignment. Mm, I'm not quite sure. I'm feeling a little reserved. 
If I want to exit the student view on the teacher side, again, this is just showing what it would look like if I was a student signed in. I'll click exit student view at the bottom. The tenth new feature is by far my favorite update with Reflect, and that is Together View. I'm going to open up a check-in that I created earlier. How are you feeling today? And I get a nice little summary here of all the different feelings and I click on these and it shows the class and I can drill in. But the best part is the upper right is together view. This is going to show me a temperature of the entire class on this check-in. So I'll click together view. And this was inspired by Teams Together Mode. I can hover and look at any of these students. Here's how Colette is feeling. Oh, it looks like Alice is feeling a little hopeless right now. Mm, Juan's feeling a little jealous. It gives a really nice pulse of the class and a very easy to glance at view. Together view is just a great way to take that temperature of the class in just a couple of seconds as a teacher and get a sense of what's going on. The eleventh new feature is creating and reviewing reading progress assignments on iPad. So I'm going to tap the plus button and choose new assignment. And now I'm going to tap on attach and I'll choose reading progress as a teacher. And that's going to open up reading progress to create an assignment. I can browse the sample library. We have all the same content that you see in PC or web or Mac. We'll cancel. I can import Word, PDF, upload, Teams, class notebook. I'll close this. In this case, I'll open up sample library and I'm going to choose a baby polar bear grows up, preview that and then choose select. That pulls in the passage. Now I can do things like change number of attempts maybe set the time limit. You can fiddle with reading coach and require video and everything else you would do in a normal assignment. So now I'll just tap next up in the upper right. And now my assignment's ready to go. The twelfth new feature is timed passage improvements to reading progress, our reading fluency tool built into Teams. I'll go here and click attach and I will choose reading progress. Now I'm going to upload my passage. Here's my geography reading passage and I'm going to go over here and choose time limit. I'm going to set this to one minute, a one minute read. What I'll show with the improvements is when the teacher reviews this, if the student didn't finish reading and they didn't finish the passage in one minute, there are new improvements to the markings and the way we calculate the passage. So I'm going to hit next and I'll assign this passage and now we'll speed ahead and assume the student has already read the passage and they didn't finish it. And I'm the teacher and my class has turned in their reading assignment. We're going to open up Alex here and we're going to see how he did on the timed passage of one minute. What you see is there's this new marker right here, this orange marker that says one minute time limit reached. And you can see all the words after that marker are grayed out, which means they're not getting counted against the total on correct words per minute or accuracy rate. So there were 10 mispronunciations, but these words here on gray, they're not marked as omissions. And the only things that are calculated, like I said, are the words that he read to at this one minute limit. If you set the limit for two minutes or three minutes, it works in a very similar way. The 13th new feature is reading progress improvements around insights and creating a challenge assignment. I'm going to switch to the insights module here. Now I'll select reading progress right in the middle here. Here are the insights for my fourth grade class. Now I'm going to scroll down and this is where you see the challenging word cloud. And we've already had this where you can see the most mispronounced words in the class. Now in the past, when I click create challenge assignment, it immediately creates an assignment in teams. But now we're going to give the educator a chance to tweak what words are in the assignment. So I'm going to click this. The top part comes directly from your word cloud. So these are from words in the reading progress assignments. So I can check some of these on. If these came directly from the word cloud, I can add those. I can turn some of these off. Again, previously in the past, you couldn't edit anything. But the most exciting part is now we have a recommendation engine and it makes recommendations for practice based on data of students with similar types of reading challenges. So it has some suggestions on words and I can check some of these on or I can check some off and I can customize this exactly how I want. Now when I click create challenge assignment, it's going to automatically create a new reading progress assignment and inject this set of words. Now what you see here is an automatically created reading progress assignment with all the words in that list and it's ready to go and hit next and make that an actual assignment to your class. The 14th new feature is class teams integration with Moodle. We'll assume that you're an educator in this demo 
and you need to have your IT admin first set up Moodle with Microsoft Teams LTI. This is available now. There's a link in the description for this documentation. Your IT admin will go to the LTI portal and get this all set up. We're gonna assume that's already happened. I'm signed into my Moodle dashboard here and I'm gonna click on Test Dynamic Group. I'm here in my course called Test Dynamic Group and I'm gonna add a Class Teams LTI to one of my topics. And next I'll show meetings after that. So go to the upper right and you're gonna turn editing on. Now I'm gonna choose a topic right here and I'm gonna choose add an activity or resource. Click this and you're gonna see external tool and we'll click that. This opens up the new page to add an external tool to a topic. So I'll give my activity a name, Microsoft Teams. Now I'm gonna drop down automatic based on tool URL and my IT admin already configured this for my institution. So I'll see these LTI choices. Now the first one we'll choose is Class Teams LTI app. Choose that. And now choose Save and Return to Course. Now if I wanna drill into this Microsoft Teams LTI component for classes, what you see is that a team was automatically created right here. Now I can open this, it has notifications, so I have new activity, that's a welcome. And I can even post directly into that. So if I click here, I can post a message directly there. So if I click in here, I'm gonna open up this dynamic group that was created automatically through the LTI component. Here is that new class team. I have a couple of students that are waiting to join, so I'm gonna to have to activate this. So you'll activate this before anyone else can see it, but this was automatically created and it's ready for my students to try it out. The 15th new feature is Teams Meetings integration with Moodle. So again, we'll click Add an Activity or Resource. Choose External Tool, give it a name, Microsoft Teams Meetings, drop this down and choose Microsoft Teams Meeting LTI app. And then choose Save and Return to Course at the bottom. Now this topic has the Class Teams LTI app linked right here, as well as the Meetings LTI app linked right here. What I'm gonna do next is switch to my Chemistry course, which has also had both of these already added, and we'll drill in to see how these work. So in the lower left, I will choose my Chemistry 101 course. And we'll choose Teams Meetings. Let's say I'm just doing meetings in my middle course and I have an LTI app integrated, we'll drill in. And here are the meetings. So you can see I don't have anything scheduled. I'm gonna go right here and choose new meeting and we'll give it a title, office hours. I'm gonna to choose to add the entire class instead of just putting in the attendees. It automatically knows the entire roster and I'm gonna set a date and we'll hit send. Now I have a meeting for my class. It was sent out to everyone. If I wanna join that meeting, I just click join here. And now my Teams meeting is ready to join just like I would normally join a Teams meeting, but it's linked up through Moodle. Another new feature for Teams Meetings is we've recently brought channel meeting support into LTI. So I'll click new meeting here, give it a title, click on add channel. Here's all my teams, expand chemistry 101, and I will choose chemical reactions and equations as my channel and I'll hit send. Here's my channel meeting. And again, I can just click join if I wanna jump in and I'll switch into chemistry just to show that channel meeting. So go to chemistry here Go down to chemical reactions and equations. And there is my channel meeting, weekly lecture series. So students can launch it from here or they can launch it right from within that Moodle course. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.